were gratified and happy. Everybody felt the workshop was superior to what was done yesterday in the less overcrowding and they had better chances. <laughs> the second workshop task will be a distal radial fracture which everybody sees. In the past, we could classify them as collies and smith and dorsal button and volar button and complex and articular and the like. But if you master the laser off or distal radial fractures, there are no classifications in distal radius. They are all fractures which are treatable and solvable by uh, Not much work has been done in international field in this international it is our field on this subject and we don't have many descriptions about this even in the original book. Uh, once I started introducing it, Dr. Yunus has done much more work on it. Dr. Himanshu, Dr. Kirpa and our group people have done close to 100 cases with such surprising results that we thought that this should be widely disseminated. After my talk, Dr. Kirpa and then Arvind, then Dr. Kirpa and then Dr. Kumbhavan. After that, again, we will do a demonstration of hand on the table, as we did in the morning. And you can go back and do your exercises. As we do not have a banquet, even if we start, as, at, as we are starting now at 3, we can go well up to 6.30 or 7. Thank you very much. So, let me start. The three-wire magic for closed distal, radial and ulnar practice. This is a common structure across all ages and both sexes. And this complex includes five factors. So in any orthopedic practice, this should be the one single common factor which you all give. See, the most commonly described factor is a college factor with a dorsal displacement. A pure college factor should not be intraarticular. The other one is a Smith factor with a volar displacement. The third one is a dorsal button fracture, intraarticular. The fourth one is a volar button fracture. And last is complex, periarticular, intraarticular fractures, which cannot be characterized by any of these five abnormalities. Just as there are five different types of distal wrist fractures, there are five different established modalities for distal wrist fracture. First one, universally applicable for hundreds of years. Close reduction, last application. It can be done painlessly under hematoma block, out, uh, augmented by axillary block. If you have a nerve stimulator, these blocks become very easy. You don't have to depend on anesthesia at all for any appalling surgery. Second one is close reduction, K wire application, and blast application. This way, the common problem of the wrist fracture slipping in 7 to 10 days when the plaster becomes a little loose can be avoided. Here we can use Dr. Arvind Jain's method of avoiding KOS by including the thumb, making like extended collie fracture that gives an extra point fixation and stops the collapse of the fracture. This is the one that most of you commonly use, the one that has got the fancy, the one which I call the wholly unnecessary surgery. Primarily promoted by multinational companies who manufacture these implants to sell them at very high prices. Next way is external fixture using ligamental taxes with Sean screws. And the last method is external fixation with the just apparatus about which we learn tomorrow. So there are five types of fractures and five different types of uh, treatments. Each having its own advantage, but each has its limitations and disadvantage too. Close reduction can be done under the hematoma block, inexpensive, and the pro method. But it does not give 100% result in most cases, as a fracture invariably collapses. Plaster may not always be tolerated well by anyone, by everyone. And plaster disease and associated complications are very common. <coughs> Close reduction, KOI fixation, plaster application, avoids the slipping of the fracture in the first 10-12 days when the swelling comes down. However, <laughs> It has a disadvantage that it retains all other disadvantages of a blast application. Open reduction and internal fixation by locking distal radial plate gives excellent reduction and holding in non porotic bones. And more importantly, it gives a wonderful radiological correction and patient satisfying x ray. But the ground rule is you are converting a closed fracture into an open fracture. Distal radius in the lurly porotic bones is like biscuit dipped in tea. The screw
rules don't get purchased even logging plates unless it's a pure buttress plate for diabetes hold these plates have the inherent problems scar keloid plate irritation and the need for second surgery external fixator shan spin and just apparatus have got good reduction in holding plate collapse avoided no operative scars however untensioned smooth wires and thick shan spins in my opinion are unphysiological the frame is not already well by every patient and uh, despite ring looking very big in 3d it is much lesser in weight than this heavy uh, uniaxial fixators my solution is very simple three wires one and a half rings one wire goes through all the metatarsals at the level of the little below metatarsal head now the universe has improved this with two wires one two three and five four three this way the arch of the palm is maintained and frame looks to be little more comfortable i heard about this only yesterday and so in my next case i am going to use two wires rather than one so this four wire magic three wire magic now become four wire magic unus prakash four wire magic please struggle in efforts with maximum benefits magic of three pins and one half pins the actual surgical time is lesser than putting a plaster so this is first this may be the first national conference in delhi since then has become an extremely popular technique over 70 surgeons are using this method and every day i get some uh, whatsapp message or other it unites the fracture faster than plate and screws and you can see this in 21 days i removed the frame and this immediately after removal of the frame and later i think there was no collapse in 3 months when he take his x ray his movements are full and he is doing very well so he has already started getting this much of stimulation at the time of frame removal itself and obviously this method leaves no scar uh results from this method are comparable to the best results from locking plate that's a patient 6 months after the surgery you can see full range of flexion extension full range of rotation and absolutely normal function as we complete video the patient in 2 minute recording subsequently one the first is you pass a metatarsal pin going through all the metacarpal pin with this type going through all the metacarpals just below the metacarpal heads i would say that impale all the metacarpals and that's how i will be doing it so far now i'm going to try doing a second one by impaling three this way and three that way next one is a radio ulnar pin ulnar subcutaneous surface we keep our index finger exactly opposite to it we palpate the shaft of radius under our thumb and besides our thumb we pass the wire and transverse lateral direction it goes through the interosseous membrane and exits out of the ulna and there is a simple safe corridor and the second radial pin is torso volar so go volar keep your hand on the radial side feel the pulsations and the exit point should be beyond medial to that dorsal you can feel the radius subcutaneously and once this is a progressive test that is what you are going to do later in the evening that what i am going to demonstrate to you now so here i have just put a ring i put a half ring below a full ring above and then i have connected them with the three three or four connection rods retaining the position where the fracture is most stable perfectly reduced and has no chance of collapse and as i will illustrate you can actually buttress a volar bottom by this without using an implant all you have to do is keep on distracting the wrist in neutral position till the fracture falls into place like amti amti and then you forcibly palm up flex and fix it in palm up flexion in palm up flexion finger movements are very free and this forcible palm up flexion will cause a cut pressing on the fracture so this is rapidly followed by many surgeons you have got so many on our group everybody is was something you should simple fracture there is a compound fracture and the magic is within 25 to 35 40 days the fracture you know it's as compared to any other method that another case sent to me by one of my friends that sub unisys case where he has added additional volume to buttress the volar bottom 
but now he has also improved and he no longer uses this olive. That's one of, I think Dr. Yunus's or my case, I don't remember, they both all look similar. And that's Dr. Yunus's case and you can see how functional the patient is. Three pins, one and a half pins. Now this is a slight change, that is a four pin assembly. So here we have one, two, three, here you have uh, five, four, three. And here the same middle atom, the andropostere. You get accurate production every day. So what you do, once you do a progressive mass spread, just as you reduce the body structure, assistant holds the elbow, your other assistant pulls the fingers apart, we disempack the fracture, take a CM X-ray, and then fix it in that position, so simple. Being well, you do it in real anesthesia, and you can see a nerve stimulator here, just a catheter used for uh, real anesthesia, nerve stimulator, goes in the axillary area. <laughs> Use of nerve stimulator is very easy, it passes current, and uh, when low current starts switching, it means the uh, needle is in the nerve. If a high current doesn't cause switching, it, the needle is outside the neurovascular one. So very easy. Patient is functional from day one. This lady is a mother of one of my employees who was helping you in the morning in the workshop. Sustained a fracture about a week or ten days ago. And that's her on seven or eight day of uh, production. She's using the remote and she's fairly happy. She's about 15 days down the line next week, I think I should remove it. Advantages can be done entirely under regional anesthesia, hematoma block of fracture, implantation pin levels, simple and easy procedure, except KOS, all components are usable, patient dysfunctional from day one, cost lesser than a locking plate or even a fiber cost, assured complication free results. Uh, that was a video which I can, I think I have shown you before. Take home procedures. The next time you get a distal radial fracture which you plan to play, try this option once and you will never forget, you will forget about locking radial plates. Thank you very much. Yes, you are very much right. Uh, my next speaker will be Dr. Kirpat. Very interesting talk, fast second tips, tricks, pearls and advice to you regarding this talk.